Hello, so I recently watched a video from Batsy Tech on the Razer Deadstalker V2 and the V2 Pro, the V2 Pro T TKL. I'm not a subscriber to him at like currently, but I do watch him like from time to time when he's like reviewing like products that like interest me. For example, like custom keyboards, switches, and like like etc. But he's like generally quite like informative and gives honest opinion on products and I really like that style but what bugs me is like uh, his Deadstalker V2 Pro T TKL review was like an exception to his norm I guess I would say it was not like lackluster but it was lacking some key info that I feel that would be like relevant information for the viewer or anyone that is like interested in the product so It was like, like he said, like he said that uh, it was not like an in-depth review on the keyboard, but he did make like comparisons to like the G915 TKL, uh, which is actually in his thumbnail. And he was referencing like the, the, the two products, like and the comparison between them like quite often. But the video like felt like a little bit like rushed. Or even like out of his thought. It was not it was not, not an in-depth review, like he said, but nor was it like a really like a good like comparison between the V2 Pro TKL or the 915 TKL. It was more I don't know, like a general comparison what you what you can do at the store by just feeling the two keyboards for around like 10 minutes. And you know, there, there was some like tidbits and stuff, but Generally, um, yeah. But like, um, so I would say like this review, like uh, this video, it was more, well, one of her, one of his like weaker videos compared to his other content, I would say. So this video, what I'm trying to do here is like to give out more info both uh, on both of the products and compare them a little bit more in depth. And maybe, um, you know, I'll, at the same time, I'll let him know that, hey, uh, as a viewer, I would like him to go back to his like basic stuff with a little bit more depth and information on, you know, the products. So yeah, that would be great. But if he doesn't watch it, it's it's also fun. I don't really mind that much. But yeah, definitely not bashing him or like flaming him or anything. Just not trying to be toxic or anything. Just voicing out my opinion regarding this video quality, like the video's quality of the like the content. So I don't really physically own this product here. This uh, Razer Deadstalker V2 Pro 10 keyless. Also, it's the the name is just. It's too long to say, like, say this 10 times, like, in a row, like, as fast as you can. Like, it'll get your tongue twisted. But, like, uh, I can only base, like, my, my opinion on the reviews, like, Batsy Tech, Hardware Canucks, and, like, the official website that they have here. Mm. I did own a 915 and a TKL version, like, a white version. I did use a TKL for, like, a three-month period. So I'm very familiar with the keyboard, but... Uh, I wouldn't say I was I was like like a long time user, but anyway, like let's let's get on with the actual like video. So the design element of this keyboard is it's it's really baffling to me. Like I really don't know what this lower section is. Like what's the purpose of this? Like it has like the real little razor text like what uh, Batik like it also like. Uh, Referencing, referencing here somewhere. I don't remember where it was. Oh, here. Like he was referencing it at like at this point. But like, what's the actual purpose of it? Like the the reason, like, like it has no purpose. Like if, if the reason is they couldn't fit all this new tech inside this chassis, like this this uh, uh this keyboard case, then sure. But I don't know if I would like really believe that. But like, I would like see an immediate like problem with me using this keyboard. I have like small hands. So uh, I, when I need to like move 
like my finger from the, let's say the number key on the top row to the function key row, like let's just say F2, I actually need to move my hand a little bit closer. And with this like little lower section here, it will like, it will like emph and like emphasize that more of like this movement. I re and I really don't want to move my hand that much, but it's just that I need to. Like there is a small like gap between the number row and the function key row, like in the 915 TKL as well. Like that's quite normal for a TKL, but it's it's still like what is the point of this? So I also use like a wrist wrist, uh, like on the keyboard, like next to the keyboard, like below the keyboard, like around here and. I just want to be as close to my keyboard as possible. So this, I just don't see the purpose of it. Like, like if they just delete this, it will make it more, like uh, look much more flush and compact, which it, which is what they're actually trying to do with the, this TKL format of this uh, keyboard. And then with the low profile and, and everything. But maybe it just doesn't bother any, anyone else with the slower section. I don't know if there's a, like a better photo of that on their website. Not really, but I think it's like maybe an inch or a few, like inch and a half, maybe here, like let's just say like four centimeters, three centimeters for everyone that is not using like imperial units. So uh, it's just it's just a weird design for me. Like why is this here? Like if it if the razor logo here or the text here had like RGB, that would be actually quite cool. That like they used to have like the razor logo here on like the Black Widow, which actually used uh back in the day. They they used to have like the logo here. Now they're dropping it for this text. But the text is also quite huge and it doesn't serve any purpose. It's it's just an aesthetic one, but it's losing a lot for this aesthetic. But yeah, like a few centimeters here of the chassis is just wasted. But also like the, the lower section is just com like it's conflicting with the idea of having a com compact TKL format, low profile keyboard because you want to like waste as little space as you can. And you can argue that the TK, the 915 TK is actually wider or like longer in this regard, like from, from this side to this side, because I think this is length and this is width. So it's actually wider, but all the like the extra space is actually on top, which it houses like these media keys, the, the RGB actually, uh, like the battery light and the other one and the volume wheel. So if you can see like here, it's actually quite flush. Like there's no like space here almost on like the bottom. Because who's like grabbing their like keyboard from like here from the top? Like nobody, hopefully. So yeah, it does have like the extra media keys, the volume wheel, and it's not really like an issue because you're not gripping from the top, like I just said. Also like, also being a, like a TKL, I noticed that it's it's missing the print screen key and uh, uh, what is the scroll key and the pause keys. They're actually like here. You need to do with a shortcut to actually do this, to, to, to like have the function of like the print screen or scroll lock or pause so it's kind of missing three keys but kind of not i actually use the print screen uh button quite a lot uh with my right hand my mouse my mouse hand because it's just very close and i can just use my thumb to rock from here to like here but now that it's missing it i need to actually i, I believe uh press the function key down and then clicking it or pressing it i i guess i guess so it's, it's, it's a little bit weird. They lost these three keys for this dedicated me media key button or this multi-function button or whatever, and this tactile volume wheel, which is actually, there is a difference between this volume wheel and the 915 because this is actually, it's, it, it doesn't have any tactility and the V2 one actually has. 
So, uh, so the ten keyless is like uh, it, it's missing a three a few keys for be actually like a ten, ten keyless. But the layout I've, I assume is quite standard. I haven't measured. I haven't uh, like seen anybody actually like uh, telling me like what's what's actually the the size of the uh, space bar, for example. But uh, it is a ten keyless, but so it's kind of like a seventy-five percent because ten keyless actually just means that you're just losing the num numpad. So seventy-five, so they don't all they just all lose the numpad. But seventy-five usually don't have like these gaps here, and it's like more compact. Like the S is next to the F one, and it's everyone just just you know clustered in. You don't have like this island cluster here or the arrow keys, or maybe maybe sometimes you have the arrow keys as the, as its own like cluster, but you don't you don't usually have this cluster here or the print screen cluster it's usually just one cluster like from like the top to the bottom it's like one uh, uh like column of keys it's usually not like this to you know to save space and make it like shorter so is it actually like a 70 part no it's not really like 60 either it's like i don't know like uh maybe like if if TKL is like eighty or something percent, this is like a seventy seven to seventy eight, I guess. But it's really not because it's the size of a TKL. So it, like the physical dimensions are like a TKL. But yeah, they just this ditch the three buttons. And one of the gripe uh, that actually uh, the Batsy Tech guy actually mentioned is that you cannot reassign or remap the function of this multimedia or this multifunction key. And it's only for the volume control. You can't remap it, but you can remap the volume wheel. But what's the difference? You can remap, I guess, to the print screen, but then you just will li li like lose the dedicated volume control. So what's the point? But yeah, it's 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 very baffling to me that you cannot reassign this even on like Synapse. Uh, but yeah, I would just rather have both, like a dedicated volume wheel and uh, three extra, you know, keys there. Uh, like another thing I really don't like these designs is here, the all the buttons and sliders on like this side, the top side, I guess. Or it would be like the, and I, I don't know what what to really call like this this side thing, top side thing. I don't know if you can see any like screenshot on their official website, but like it, it, it's here on the Batsy Tech. We can, we're just gonna reference it a little bit. Uh, yeah. Oh no, more like here. Down feet selector for each profile for degree height adjustment, and you have storage for the wireless dongle. On the top edge of the board, you have the selector for 2.4 or Bluetooth, and three quick select buttons for profiles, which are stored on the board. Yeah, so like the buttons are like all here, and the USB C connection is also here. Uh, the the Bluetooth to the what they call it the hyperspeed. Uh, yeah, the hyperspeed wireless. It, the, the the slider is also here. Why? Why? Why is it there? Like the USB is really nice, and that is an that's a big upgrade from the nine fifteen TKL because the micro USB is just it's just bad. It's just very flimsy and everything. I, I'll get back to it, but like, why is the like the position like here? Like it's not really like visible to the user unless you're like. I don't know, having a very bad angle, but then you're probably not like sitting very ergonomically on your like station. So like you can't even see the buttons, even from this angle that they uh, they shot like this official picture of it. You, you cannot see what profile you're using. Uh, is it on Bluetooth or is it on the hyperspeed? You can't really see anything. So if you need to fidget around, like change profile, you actually need to like move your head, like bend over a little bit to see what you're pressing, or just you need to like fidget around and feel around. And that's that's not really like good like user experience in my opinion. Like you also need to like test the slider if it's all the way on the left or the right. 
it's just why why couldn't they just like if they move this lower section the top you can you could just have all these buttons on the you know the top section i guess it's 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 a little bit weird like i would like it having like indicator that if i'm on bluetooth or, or 2.4 or hyperspeed wireless connection or whatever they call it or the profile that i'm actually on because what if like uh, I accidentally bump something here when I'm traveling or something. I, I need to know what profile I'm on. It would be cool if they had like RGB here to like to shoot out and then you would like see a bit more. But I guess you can tell from the lighting based on the profiles, what profile you're on. Maybe I, I, I don't have these products. I don't really know. But, but yeah, like I'm a really tall guy, like I'm 184 centimeters tall. So that's like six feet tall for your US viewers. So like an ergonomic solution for me would be to actually lift the keyboard from my position to see these top side markings and assuming the cable is not very tight as well. Otherwise I need to disconnect the cable. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just very impractical design. I know like the disconnecting and lifting a keyboard takes like 10 seconds, but it's 10 seconds due to an impractical design made by Razer. And why am I bringing like this up, like all this up? It's because they're actually marketing this keyboard as a low profile ergonomic well, keyboard. It's not really an ergonomic one if you need to like you know, lift your keyboard, bend over or fidget around. You need to like do this all like this unnecessary movement to do like a basic stuff. But yeah, it's like the first thing they state on their website after the name, the title, the name is like low profile ergonomics. Is this, I don't, I don't think this is like, er, like good ergonomic design, but if you have like an, another opinion, just state in the comments. Uh, uh, the next thing is I actually want to talk about the bottom side. The bottom is like, uh, whoops, it's, it's like a this where that you have like the rubber feet and this one, the little, the little dongle, I don't know, crevice from a slot, I, I guess. I, I, I don't like this. You, 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 you use this for putting the dongle here. Uh, during your travel, so you don't lose it. Uh, the, like the concept and the idea is not new, uh, but and it's really, uh, it, it's fine, really. But the, like the lid, you have, like this guy, uh, the battery tech removes like the lid. And nine degree height adjustment, and you have storage for the wireless. Yeah, you can just you just saw the lid. On the top edge of the board. Okay, he doesn't put it back. But yeah, the Flip down feet for six and nine degree height adjustment, and you have storage. The the lid. It literally reminds me like, you know, the early 2000s uh, when you, you know, have your Game Boy, like you need to use your nail to like, like, I don't know, pry it open to change your batteries. Like the lid has like this little small crevice on it that you need to actually, you know, it has a little bit of give and you need to pry it open with your nail. It's really fragile and quite tricky to open at some, like, like time to time. And if you have like short fingernails like I do, it's 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 not fun. So like you can see like the, the lid uses like few notches here to get into place. Like I feel if you use this, you know, if you travel a lot and use this lid like often, I think it will become like quite loose and flimsy for a while, if not broken or not lost. So uh, this is not a really uh, like a good solution for this. I would rather just have the lid on here or just not, I don't know, and have like the dongle in your backpack or bag or uh, I guess your pocket or something. And if you tr travel, you can, you know, it, it's it's fine, I guess. But it, it's, it's a function that they implemented uh, which is not a very good like uh, function they implemented. Like, why is it like done like this? It's it's kind of like wasted potential. But you can say like, hey, they just then then don't just don't use the lid one. You paid over two hundred euros or dollars or whatever to 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 have like this keyboard. So if you're not using all its function, it's kind of like you know wasted potential. Well, back to the we'll come back to the price as well. So. How actually like I would have like uh, fixed all this? Let me see if I get a get a get a good better picture of 
or better angle on the on the on the dongle slot. I don't think you can. It's not on. That's it. Text video. Yeah, it's not. Well, then. Well, here, yeah, here. You can see, like, it's. It does not look that secure. I, like, mm, if the dongle doesn't like fall out if you put it here without the lid, then just don't have the lid. Why even have the lid? But yeah, uh, how would I f actually fix all this stuff on on this Razer product? Well, to start off the lower section, I would add it to the top. If you need to add like the tech that like the, here's some like, uh, I don't know, boards and some tech here that doesn't fit, just, just move it a little bit. You have so many talented and smart engineers and designers working for this company. They, they should be able to like imp like have everything that is actually here move it a little bit like yeah having the profiles like the connection interface like added to the top section like the the new top section that is now a little bit larger or even have it like here i don't know uh you can even move like the the wheel and the multifunction key a little bit like up as well to, to like then you can house like th the three extra keys that you were missing mm. or even like move this delete insert home and page page up and down cluster down a little bit and you can move like the leds to next to the up arrow key like another gripe is that the the, the leds here I get it. Bad C Tech said that the, he stated that you can use a shortcut command to actually show the battery li like life or uh, sta status on it on with these four LEDs to indicate how much battery you have left. That is fine. That like that that is fine. But if you if you look closely at this uh, the four LEDs, I don't know if that's a good try anywhere. Like here, you can see like here, uh, there's a caps lock, the caps lock LED, and I assume this S is a scroll lock LED, which is funny because, like, ironic, because this keyboard doesn't really have a scroll lock, you know, like a, sc a scroll lock key, so you don't accidentally bump it. And like, oh, I have scroll lock on, but you have the, you know, the LED for it because you need to use like a shortcut to even have the scroll lock, you know, to happen. So this M, I don't really know what the M is. Uh, neither does uh, like the hardware connects nor the bad seat tech actually state what this LED is actually for. I assume it's M for macros. So when this is blinking or just on, then you can record your macros. It's it's fine. I don't really care about macros, and you can say that that's wasted potential if you have the macro functionality, but you're not using it. I get it, but it's just not for me, and maybe for I don't know. I have not done a research on this. Like, if a lot of people use a lot of macros, then I don't know. Fine, but then this key. This is this looks to me like it has a crosshair with a G on it. So this would be the gaming key. So by pressing, like if you have the gaming mode on, I don't know how to trigger it on this keyboard, but it, I assume it's one of the shortcuts. Oh, it's here actually. Yeah, it's here. It's probably a function F10. So that will disable the Windows keys for your keyboard when like, like when you need to disable when you know when you're playing like a full screen game and everything i prefer borderless so it doesn't really bother me that much but if you have like a full screen game on and then you accidentally press windows key like flashes and then you like it takes like a like a, i don't know half a second to show you the desktop it's it's really annoying i, I i'm like is it really necessary or is the like uh the, the windows lock or the gaming mode even that necessary to be honest like i have a custom keyboard myself and 
Like these functions, they, 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 they usually don't even exist on the custom queue. They can exist, but they, they're not like a necessity. They're not like an essential thing that you need to have on your keyboard. So, uh, yeah, so I would argue that they are not really that critical. And you can like split them into here, like these two LEDs here and these two LEDs here. And um, like why, I think these are not even RGB. I have seen like videos, like these being only white when they're on. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a bit weird when it's between keys that have RGB and then there's like white LEDs. Uh, what is it? What if the white LEDs that just doesn't like fit your setup? And if you need to have like a battery indicator, why not just replace one of these LEDs with a battery indicator? That hey, your battery is low now. I get like this. You you can like know uh, by quarter like what uh, percentage is left. Like is it like seventy five, fifty, or twenty five, or zero, or or hundred? Yeah, it is more informative, but if you need that much like a detailed info, you can just open Synapse and just see it. It takes a few seconds. I would argue that it probably takes as as much uh, like as activating the, the shortcut to see how much battery you have left. So just a battery LED would be nice. Like actually on the G915, when you're low on battery, it will show. So yeah, uh, uh, about the dongle beneath, if it like if it's secure and tight enough in there, just just don't have the lid. Or even better, like the Logitech G915, the TKL version, actually have a very like stylish way to store your dongle during travels. And it's I don't know if you can actually see it here. Is there a backside photo? Here, yeah. It's here. You can see it's just like a slot and you just connect it here. It will, it's very secure and will not fall out. Very good. Just just do it like that. But note that uh, uh, the, where actually is this here? The dongle actually has like a, you know, this green plastic part. And it's very nice that Razer is doing this because it's very consistent among like Razer products to actually have the screen part on the USB-A connector. I believe like the, the quartz lineup from Razer actually has it like here, like pink. And yeah, that's also pretty cool. I really like it that they're actually like doing something like this. Uh, but yeah, uh, another good thing about this dongle actually is that it can actually connect to two Razer products instead of one like you know logitech if you have like a g pro x wireless light speed headsets it needs its own dongle if you have a g pro x uh, super light mouse it has its own dongle if you have the g915 tkl you need to have the dongle okay if you have the power play then you can lose your mouse dongle but the whole power play is basically just this receiver for you know this light speed connection so it doesn't kind of just doesn't count. But yeah, it's really nice because then you can actually have your mouse if it uses the hyperspeed, I guess, the high speed speed connection and this keyboard to connect it. It's it's really nice. I would like that it could like do like maybe five products. Like th three would be nice. Like if it had like connection to your wireless headset from Razer. That would be really cool. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see what else do I actually have here. Written up. But yeah, it's like this tech, like this multi-device support for like connecting uh, two products. It's not actually like a new new tech it's not like wow this is never done before like logitech actually had this before but not just just not on the g lineup it's like on the i think it's called like the unifying unifying receiver 
yeah, and it can actually connect to six products of, from Logitech that supports this, you know, compatible accessories. So it can actually connect to six products and it's really good. And like Logitech, you need to like adapt this function from, you know, the Unify receiver to the G lineup. Like and also like lose the Trident micro USB for uh, the power play, the mouse, uh, the keyboards, just, just lose it. Lose it. It's lose the, like the micro USB altogether. It's not about the Trident, but the micro B like you all together. It's horrendous. It's flimsy and it's, it's, it just falls off and it's not durable. And you know, it's kind of weird or even it's, it's just very bad to have like this uh, micro USB in this decade for over $200 innovative electronics such as the G915. It's it's kind of embarrassing, but yeah. I, I have a lot, of, a, a lot more ideas. So Logitech or Razer, if you're watching, hire me up, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, to, to bring this like, I, I bring up like this new tech before on the G, uh, no, not, not the G1, but the V2 Pro. Tankyless, it has like this new tech. For example, there's like this Bluetooth 5.0, it's marketing 5.0. Well, you know what? Uh, like, it, it, it's, it's a little bit weird because Bluetooth 5.0 is actually, let's see, if I remember correctly, it's like a few years old now. Yeah, it came, like Bluetooth 5.2 came from 2020. So yeah, 5.2 is two years old now. So yeah, uh, they're not like adapting very new, fresh tech. 5.0 has been here for a while, I guess. But but yeah, it's, so they're not housing like the newest tech here. And like Batsy Tech actually said, it's very weird to compare this product, this V2 Pro Tankyless, to a, a G915 that came out three years ago. But they don't they themselves, the Razer doesn't even use like, you know, tech that is from a few years back, like two and a half years ago, since it was January 2020. So this article actually details more about like uh, the, rev the revision changes and everything about the Bluetooth 5.2 to 5.0 differences. But like the, rev the relevant information is that the transmission st stability is better and the distance is better and the power consumption is lower on the 5.2. So that is the crucial part here to know. So the segue here to, to, uh, from here to is to uh, battery life. And neither pros actually list like the specs, for example, here, they, they don't really list like what's the capacity of the battery here. It doesn't even really say it. And on Razer, there actually is, they don't really state it on the specs either. Like if you, like, if you check here, like there's like not, no info here, basically no info. But if you check on the overviews page, there's like an ultra long 50 hour battery life and you can like, you can actually fidget around this a little bit and it's it's all right, like as a user interface on this web page, it's it's fine, but they don't really state how, like how big the, the battery is here. So uh, Logitech claim like 40 hours with 100% brightness and even, like even uh, 135 days without any RGB. They stated here on their site that it has like 40 hours, 100% brightness. I've heard that it actually lasts like 30 hours for some people, but I have, mine just lasted forever, but I didn't blast it at 100% either. So I don't really know. But on like the, the razor, the razor is a little bit weird with zero brightness. You, have, you, have, you get like, 
50 days or 200 hours of battery life. It's still not 135 days, but this is because the switches work a little bit different. But with like 50% brightness and four hours of use per day, it lasts 50 hours or about 12 days. So a little bit, almost two weeks. Why is it set by default like this? Who uses four hours of, you know, keyboard per day? Like I work in an office and we work for like seven and a half hours. I know some people work like six hours to eight hours or even more. It's fine. But four hours? This is like a gaming session for four hours. But remember, this is marked as an ergonomic product as well. So if we move this, you can actually see that the battery life actually doesn't change. It's just the days that it changes. And this is because, uh, because of the switches. So I don't know if, uh, I know I would, I wouldn't say that I'm like an expert on the switches that they have here. Like I certainly wouldn't like, I wouldn't dare to say that, but they're actually like optical switches. And if I, I assume they're actually like optical, optomechanical switches, like optical and mechanical switches. And how optical switches generally work is that they have like this beam of light just always present. It's always on. And when you press down the key, the key actually, there has a small part of the key on this, I don't know, under the housing, uh, inside the housing that will block the beam of light. And when, when you block it, it will indicate, it's like send information and indicate that, hey, this key is now being pressed. I don't know if someone can else can explain this better, but that's generally how optical switches work. So when the beam of light is always on, it's basically using your battery, you know, even on idle. So that's why uh, the battery life doesn't really change the, on hours, but on days it changes, depends on how much you use because it's basically always just on. But yeah, if someone can explain a little bit better, you can, you can put it on the comments. But yeah, by pressing the stem down, the switch goes down and blocks the beam of light. That would, how I would like explain it. So uh, I usually spend like around 10 hours on my PC per day. I know I work with, with a, a computer and I like to spend my free time on computer as well. So uh, this would last like maybe ten, five days on my use. And five days is not much, it's almost like a week. But I, I did remember using my G915 TKL for like maybe up to like two weeks without charging. But yeah, credit to like Razer, like credit where credit is due. Like f for this keyboard with the optical switches to last this long, it's, it, it's impressive. Like there's a reason why there aren't many like wireless keyboards with optical switches is because, you know, the shorter battery life. But what's actually interesting here is that the Bluetooth 5.0 actually increases your battery life. You know what could have been even better? If they use like uh, Bluetooth 5.2 and like this article stated, I don't know if this is like a very creditable, but you can do your own research uh, as well on, regarding like 5.2 Bluetooth. And here it's, it's stated that the power consumption is lower. So you would ex actually get more time, more battery life with the Bluetooth 5.2. So yeah, big slip up here. I, I, I would rather have like the Bluetooth 5.2. It Remember, this keyboard costs over $200 or 200 euros. And also like the, you know, the, there might be some caveats with the Bluetooth, like input delays. It, it might be better with 5.2, I don't know, but the connection stability might also be better. Um, you know, there's that. The G950 actually has Bluetooth as well, 
but doesn't really state what it actually is. Yeah, it just says Bluetooth. It doesn't say anywhere on this, in this on their site that it's like a Bluetooth 5.0, 5.2, 3.0. Doesn't really say anything here. So yeah, about, about the switches, like the, like I said, the Razer houses like the V2 Pro TKL had like the optical switches, and the TKL actually has only the silent optical linear switches. I don't know if they're actually silent because they didn't like sound silent when I watched like Hardware Connects video or uh, Batsy text video. It doesn't really sound like a silent switch. Like I have uh, silent alpacas on my keyboard and they sound nothing like these switches on the videos. So yeah, I would suggest they're just linear optical switches and they only offer at this, like as we speak, uh, this switch variant for the TKL. The, the V2 Pro full size actually has a clicky version, clicky variant of the switch aside with the uh, linear, which is kind of weird. Like I know that the clicky switches actually like the, the green ones made Razer, you know, they got the Razer where they are now. But in this day and age, who still uses clicky switches? You can't use them at the office because you will get, you know, just, I don't know, you will get shouted at. And, and you can't really, you really use them during stream because they're extremely annoying. You can't really like use them when you're just, you know, talking with the buddy or something or someone on, on Discord or something because your, your microphone actually might pick up, you know, the keyboard, the clicky sound. So it's, it's quite annoying. So who actually uses clicky switches? So they only have like the uh, the red optical switches, the linear optical switches. The TK version actually has uh, all of them, clicky, linear, and tactile. The tactile, which is the brown here, uh, is actually the only switch option you have for the white G915 TKL. But, but yeah, uh, as a as a like a hobbyist of uh, you know custom keyboards, th th there are no, there is no like hot swap ability on either of these keyboards, G915 or the V2 Pro TKL. There's like no hot swap ability, and you need to like desolder the, all the switches and then solder a new one. The problem, well, not more of a problem, but like. Uh, the thing about uh, the Razer one is that because it uses optical switches, it might only be compatible with other optical switches. Even if it had like opticals, uh, like, uh, like hot, swap, hot swap ability, like some custom keyboards have hot swap ability with optical switches, they're only compatible with other optical switches because, you know, the interesting housing inside the you know the, the the whole switch because it functions a little bit like different than a normal mechanical one so even if you could disorder all the switches and put in new new switches in it they probably need to be optical ones on the tkl uh, the tkl version uh it's not much better on the g915 i mean uh, because they actually use Kale's chalk switches. I don't know if you can see here. Like they use like this chalk switches, and you might be able. I haven't. I haven't used. I haven't like had just a just just a switch because I don't really want chalk switches on my custom keyboard with you know hot swap hot swap ability because I can. The, the options are like limitless. How what switches I, I I want I can I can want on my keyboard. So why would I want stock uh, like the kale chalk switches when they're you know a little bit they're not that stable and they're quite fragile and a lot of things. There might be uh, some reviews on, for example, Hardware Canucks did a great review on the G915 back in the day about the switches and the keycap breaking and everything. So. I don't have that much of personal experience with the switch itself, but I believe if you would desolder all these switches, it looks like a three pin connection. You could just, you know, 
solder on, solder in some new switches as well. You will lose like the low profile nature of this keyboard, which is kind of, I don't know, a uh, little bit conflicting because it's all about low profile, but you would get the feel and the sound maybe what you were, you know, seeking. So uh, more about like the, the switch, it does look like it has like this cherry-esque stem on the switch, but the, the, it has like this weird extrusion next to it, like this, I don't know what to call it. So uh, because I don't have this, this keyboard personally, I don't really know if it's compatible with just normal keycaps with the cherry stem. I don't know if this will like have some interference with the keycap, but it might or it might not. And that will lead us to the keycap itself, which is Razer actually says that it, they're using ABS keycaps here. ABS keycaps, double shot ABS keycaps, which is uh, that's quite quite normal for like these kinds of keyboards, you know, that you buy from the store. Like for example, the G915 also use ABS. I don't know where does it state it, but it, it, it's it's ABS for sure. If I'm wrong, then just state it in the comments, I guess. So it, they're ABS, but they what they're saying. Is there some special ABS? Like in the Batsy Tech, he actually got a quote from the from Razer themselves that they're using some special ABS that will last more than P double shot BB PBT, which I am very skeptical. Like, what? Like, does it have like some weird coding on it? Doesn't the coding rub off and then it's just a normal ABS keycap? So I, I don't I, I don't know. But yeah, it, it is a little bit weird. Uh if you I'm not do, gonna do like a sound the sound test because I don't have I don't have neither keyboards here anymore. Uh but if you want uh G915 TKL uh sound test, you can look from I recommend the hardware Canucks video on, on it. And if you want a sound test on the V2 Pro TKL. Uh, you can also check Hardware Connects or even Batsy text video about it. They both do like a sound test and it, they're honestly fine. But yeah, if someone knows if uh, this is uh, the keyboard, the switch is compatible with normal keycaps, let me know on like the comments. So yeah, the modding capabilities, I assume, are quite limited with the keyboard it's like as a whole. It's... You can, you can you can see it's very thin. It's very thin, and like I said, with the keycaps, uh, you can change them. Maybe the switches you can't really swap them out unless you're swapping out for other, maybe even just exclusively Razer switches. But yeah, that's about it with the switches and and and, and keycaps. They aren't really like a plate. The case itself is the plate and it's made from aluminum. And that's fine. The, the easy mods here are just the PVP foam on the bottom or whatever you want, whatever, whatever substance you want put, put in the, uh, the bottom case, the bottom half of the case. And then you can do the Tempest tape mod on the PCB. I don't really have like a picture of of the PCB because nobody has actually done a teardown on this keyboard, at least to my knowledge. And if they have, then I, I am sorry, then I'm wrong. But you can do like a Tempest, Tempest tape mod on the PCB. And But other than that, those are like the easy ones. Like other than that, you can't really do anything without like a desoldering like tools or like soldering station because you need to like desolder this if you want to add a foam between uh the the plate or the the top case and the pcb if you want to add any like plates there you would need to have to like the desoldering station or the uh, soldering station with desoldering tools so yeah that's i don't think it's worth it and also if you add too much foam this whole case might just not 
Like it, it just might not close. With the G915, I did the P form on the bottom and I did the Tempest tape mode. Those are the easy ones. But uh, actually like Batsy Tech actually loops these switches using some kind of syringe method. I don't know where it is. Anyway, it's, it's in here somewhere in the video. Like he uses some kind of syringe or some kind of syringe-esque tool with loop and he just presses on down the switch and then just, you know, pumps out the loop and the, the switch. I don't know if that's like, uh, if you have, if you notice any like difference in it, you can, and but it's quite minimal. If you need to, if you really want to loop your switches and make the best out of the keyboard of this keyboard, then you need to desolder the switches and then open the switches manually and like solder, like uh, not solder, but loop them like the normal way, the basic way, the standard way, and then put the switch back together and then, you know, solder them back in. Oh yeah, I actually did, didn't loop the, the switches. He actually looped the stabilizers. And that's another thing. I assume this, this keyboard has plate mount stabilizers. So they can be all right, but most of the time they might be a little bit rattly. So what you can do is actually put a little bit of, uh, by taking this apart, this, this keyboard and putting a little bit of uh, bandaid or tape on the PCB where the stabilizers rest. So you can do that and you can use the bad seed text method of, you know, lubing the, the stabilizers. That's not the, not the best way of lubing the stabilizers, but that's how you can do that. You cannot wholly mod the stabilizer without soldering all the switches because they're kind of like sandwiched in. Oh yeah, then you probably cannot actually use the tape or the bandaid on the PCB either where the, uh, where the stabilizers rest unless you can somehow lift this a little bit and you, it might require some bending. So I don't really recommend it if you don't solder, desolder the switches. About any like O-ring mount method, like popularized by keyboard, I guess. I think there would be out of the question because this is just so much, so compact. And I don't think this will just close if you have like the O-ring, I have uh, O-rings in like the screw with the screws. I have not seen how long the screws are because I don't have the physical product like next to me, but I assume they're quite short, like on the G915. But yeah, that's that's about all the major key mod, keyboard mods that I can think of. But yeah, with the, uh, so the recap, I may actually made a comparing table between these two. Let me just open it just a second. Here. So here's like a comparing table between the two TKL products with the uh, 915 on the blue and then the reds on the green, you know, they're, they're normal colors. I guess this needs to be like cyan, cyan a little bit to like match with the Logitech colors, but whatever. So, uh, so the Logitech G915 is actually a little bit more expensive than the Razer. So uh, but these are, by the way, US dollars. If you uh, if you didn't like guess that before, so the Razer is ten euros or ten bucks cheaper. But the thing is, in Finland, I I can see like quite often like the Logitech G15 and the TKL version on say. Uh, just now, I think Logitech G915 is like 180 euros. Okay, yeah, 189 euros, 190 euros. So that is that is quite cheap compared to like, you know, uh, the 229. So yeah, there's that. Uh, I actually like a few weeks ago, yeah. I actually saw like a G915 TKL, the black ver version of it, the black variant and tactile was like 139. And that was actually a good deal, like a really good deal. The G915 full size version is often like 199 or 169. Well, the cheapest I've seen is like 169. So compared to like the Logitech G915, which is uh, like 250 or something. 
euros. It's quite expensive. Let's just check real quick. Okay, yeah, it's 250, but it's now 229 on sale. So yeah. Uh, so the, the Deathstalker V2 Pro, TKL and the V2 Pro are actually cheaper than their counterparts from Logitech, but not by much since Logitech products usually go on sale, at least here. So the colors, the Logitech G915 TK actually offer a white one and the Razer is just the black one. The Logitech black is actually more like a gunmetally gray, I guess, more than black, but it's fine. They will they will fit like all like basic setup with black and white. The dimensions here are listed here. Uh, Batsy Tech actually did not list this. I would actually want to know how it compares to G915 TKL. For example, like the length, which is uh, from this point to this point, it's actually, the Logitech one is actually a little bit uh, longer than the Razer one, but but not by much. The uh, the width here is yeah, it, it's still like wider, but because like you know, Logitech has this massive not massive but larger upper section, and the V2 Pro actually has the you know the lower section and the upper section. This is wasted potential and this is wasted potential. So it could be a lot actually, it's like smaller, more compact if they tried. The height doesn't really matter that much. Logitech is more low profile, I guess. So that's a W for Logitech. And the weight, the Logitech weights more, weighs more than the Razer one. And personally, I prefer, you know, a more hefty keyboard. I like, you know, like a really like, uh, like, I don't know. It has like this premium feel when it's like, um, like when it's weights more. So that's why like brass weights exist for like custom keyboard community and stuff. So they would want to add more weight to their keyboard. But yeah, that, that's just a personal preference. So the dimensions are quite comparable. They're a little bit more wasted space on the razor, but if it doesn't bother it, then it doesn't bother you. The USB is a big one. Like both are detachable, yes, but the Logitech uses the micro USB with the Trident. Actually, no, it doesn't use the Trident. It has it only has the micro USB. It's the G Pro uh, keyboard that has the Trident. So yeah, it, it, that is uh, that is not acceptable in this day and age for this expensive a product. The Razer one, it's smart. It uses USB-C. That's great. The Bluetooth uh, Razer has the 5.0. Logitech has it, it. Just has Bluetooth. For the battery life, uh, like uh, Logitech lasts on zero brightness for 135 days. The Razer lasts for 50 days on 100% brightness, which I actually did not show. It lasted for around 30 hours or three days. Oh, yeah, it's oh, actually on Bluetooth. So, yeah, now it's actually correct. So, around that. Uh, on the battery life on Logitech, the, the 40 hours and 135 days, I assume it's on the light speed connection and not the Bluetooth connection. But nobody states that, that anywhere. So, it's up to debate. The software, the Logitech uses G Hub, the, the Razer uses the Synapse 3. Uh, I have my say on, I have a very strong opinion on both. Uh, for, for example, a Synapse, if something goes wrong, then you cannot fix it on Synapse. But same goes for G Hub. You can't, on the G Hub, you can't even like re reset the firmware from G Hub. What if like something goes wrong with G Hub? You, you just you just need to uninstall it and install it back. With Synapse, you can still reset the firmware on on products, but you most of the time just does not like do anything. It does not solve any of my problems I had in the past. So it's 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 about like you know the drivers and stuff. So you need to go to a device manager and just you know do do your stuff there. Now about like the. The USBs, the logic actually states that the USB cable is 1.8 meters long, 
Razer actually does not state anything on the length of the key of the USB, but I assume it's about the same. So the switches, uh, the uh, Logitech uses the K ones, the GL tactile, GL linear, and the clicky ones. And Razer V2 Pro TKL has the optical linear. Uh, as a side note, the white use all, can only have the GL tactiles, the white variant from G915. The keycaps both are ABS, and Razer have this special ABS. The key, uh, the keycaps needs to be on chalk. On the Logitech and on the Razer, it has the cherry stem, but I don't know. The feed angles are actually quite different because the Dead Stalker actually is much, uh, it's much taller than than Logitech to begin with. Like uh, it's at like 1.02 inches tall. So with more angles, I don't know if this will do any good. But yeah, the feed angles are actually different. Like on Logic G915 TKL, it's four and eight, and on on Razer One, it's six and nine. But yeah, uh, another thing I want to say about the software is the Synapse uses way too much memory for what it does. So basically, the it controls your lighting, the the chroma lighting, which is very bright and all. But that's another thing. That's another thing for another time. But it uses too much memory for what it does. Like Logitech does the same thing with, you know, the lighting, the IQ does it as well. And, you know, there's all kinds of like this software, but the Synum uses a lot of memory. And I have 128 gigs of RAM on my DDR4 on my computer. And this still uses way too much, to, like, to, in my opinion. It doesn't require to use it, so it's not that efficient, or it does something weird in the background as well. I'm not sure what it, what it's doing, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, what else did I did I miss anything? Probably not. Just that the battery life that the Razer probably has a higher capacity battery than Logitech, but it does use it much quicker. So about, yeah, actually the last, one thing I still want to say is just how bad the Razer website is. Like if you go to the Razer website here and you want like, okay, this is like the overview. This is like the marketing stuff. Like this is where like the G915 usually or the logic products like states that hey we're using like uh like plain like you know this flying plane grade aluminum what is that give us the standard of the aluminum like material the, the alloy that you they're using or just say it's aluminum it's like is it brushed like just tell us how it's like how it's done but no this is like all this marketing stuff it's it's all right. I think they actually dropped the plain grade uh, aluminum for G915. It used to be like on like the 513, 513, five, G9513. I don't know. Something like that. They had like this uh, plain grade aluminum. But yeah, this is all right. But yeah, like the, the, the tech specs and the specs in general, like it's all here, the physical dimensions, the weight without the cable, technical specifications are here. The, the, the switch like specs are here, which is fine. They're really good. The onboard memory, whatever, the battery life, it's, 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 it's uh, it could be better. It could be better, but it's, it's still here. The fe other features here, yeah, they're listed. Bluetooth is not stated what what revision of Bluetooth they're using. Uh, the warranty information is here, and then just a bunch of stuff. That, what's in the box is here. The requirements, blah, 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 blah. And the support. So this is fine. Very basic, but it's not that bad. On the Razer one, so if you're on the overview, and you want to know like more of the the product more than just this marketing stuff you usually uh press like you click that that's the specs the specs but look how small this is like switch type linear 
Okay, the key field, light and instant. What? I think this is just personal preference. Like, like this is not a, like a spec, like this is like a fact. Approximate sizes, 10 keyless. What are the dimensions? Like 10 keyless could mean anything. Like, well, okay, not anything, but almost anything. Uh, the lighting is the Razer Chroma, okay? Except these four light LEDs. The wrist reds, no. Onboard memory, up to five profiles. Media keys, yes. They don't state anything else. They just have pass-through, none. There's no USB pass-through, okay? Like all of these that he ha doesn't have, I think you don't need to state them. Connectivity, via Razer, wireless, hyperspeed, or the Bluetooth or Type-C, cool. Keycaps, ultra durable coated ABS keycaps. Okay. Others. This is a switch spec. Why is it not here? Why does it not have like switch and have like a bunch of like this switch stuff here? Others. Hyperspeed technology. It's already here. Multi device support. Okay. That's good. Razer Synapse. Okay. That's. I, I, well, Great. And kill rover and fully programmable keys, fine. Gaming mode option. Is this really like a spec thing you want to put on your spec? Like the G915 also has it. Like this is the LED for it. This is the LED for it. It also has like the uh, turn off all RGB or lights button. They're not really marketing that on the like the tech specs. Like why is it here? Is it really lacking that many stuff that you need to actually put like this here? Detachable braided type C. Okay, what's the length of it? 5052 aluminum alloy, top case. Okay, so is the bottom case plastic? I assume it is. This, this is like, what the hell is telling me nothing? So what you actually need to do is actually click here, the support, and type in Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro TKL. And then you need to find it. Uh, I think it's here. Yeah. You, I, like, you, you, everyone wants this spec sheet here. So here it is the, the variation name, the blah, blah, blah. Uh, the RGB backlighting, you want to know if it's per key, unless it's like a zone. And the in gaming mode for the okay, setup three, yeah. What's the poll rate? Okay, G915 actually does not state that, but yeah, this is good to have. Why not have this listed on the overview? Or maybe it is, but I didn't read it like thoroughly, but it needs to be like showing. Battery life, 50 hours, just just 50 hours, nothing else. Dedicated media keys, blah, 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 blah. And here, here are the dimensions and the weight. Like, why is it not in the, in the normal one? Like, imagine if you're like, a, I don't know, like if you have like children and stuff and you were born in the 80s, so a little bit of, bit, bit of a boomer. And also, why doesn't let, let, let me go back? So you like you will get no info from this tech specs page. It is so it just doesn't serve any purpose. Replace this tech specs with the other spec sheet you, I just had open from the support. I have it here. But but yeah. Finally, I would, I would like conclude that if you really want either of this keyboard, like this low profile TKL nature, and you don't want to go to the hassle of like having a custom keyboard, then fine. Either one of them, one of them is fine. Like I would, I would, I would. If you ask me, I would recommend recommend like a custom keyboard as a DIY as a DIY kit or a fully assembled. It, it will cost about the same as these keyboards if you want a budget one. But yeah, if you're like, 
it really comes down to what environment are you in. If you're invested in, for example, the Razer Chroma environment, then buy the v the Deathstalker V2 Pro. It's just a it's a no brain one. If you have a Logitech G uh, environment like I do, then get the G915. So it will it will make sense to like buy that product lineup that you're already invested in, but but you need to also remember that the Logitech ones usually go on sale, so it's it is gonna be cheaper if it's gonna be a standalone product. But yeah, for me, the the V two Pro just comes up with like deal breaking design elements, like this lower section, the buttons here, the dongle slot, and it's just not good enough for me. But yeah, like I said, you can get a, a very decent custom keyboard for this price range. Like, is it just me or has like the keyboards, have the keyboards price gone up way too much like for the past, I don't know, few years? I remember having like a gaming keyboard for like 60 euros, 60 dollars, 80, 80 is fine, even 100 is fine. But now it's like, TKL ones are like over 200. That's a little bit too much. But yeah, uh, also like you need to remember that the G915 has the micro USB. I can't put more, more emphasis on the G9, uh, the, the micro USB. But yeah, for a more in-depth review on either of these products, uh, go watch like, uh, I can recommend like Hardware Connects video on the G915 or even the V2 Pro, it doesn't cover some things that I stated and my personal opinion on this keyboard, but it's fine. Bad text video is also fine on the V2 Pro. I'll, I'll put both of the videos links on in the description. And I'm re I recommend like subscribing both of them there. They're doing great content and we really need reviewers in this this world of like otherwise these companies will just get away with everything they want to and that's just bad so having reviewers is very very crucial for like you know keeping these companies in check yeah so yeah recommend uh, i recommend subscribing to both of them and yeah peace